everyone, my name is Catherine Dunleavy. I'm the program coordinator at the Cortal Gallery for our National Partners Programme. I'm so sorry we can't all be together in person to talk about the fantastic work going on across the sector, but hopefully this short presentation will at least give you some insight into the work that our programme's been doing over the last couple of years, and hopefully we'll be together in the future to talk about these things in more detail. Before I start, I just wanted to acknowledge that most of the work um, that I'm going to talk about happened before we and our partners had to close our doors and stop a lot of our activity, but we're hopeful that over the next, um, over the coming months, or over the next couple of years, we'll be able to get back to working in local communities and engaging people on a personal level. But acknowledging that that might not happen or might not happen for some time. We're also trying to be very creative and innovative and look at new ways to engage people online, for example, and um, through taking talks and presentations into an online format. I'd hoped our partners would be able to contribute um, to this talk, but obviously they're all scattered across the country and um, are working from home in various ways. So for now, I'd like to pay a tribute to them. They're incredibly inspirational people to work with and we've been very, very fortunate to see them work with their collections, to share their knowledge with them, and also to see how they work with their local communities. They're incredibly committed people, and I hope that will come through um, in the course of this presentation. At the end of the presentation, I will give you some contact details, so if you do have any questions or any comments, do feel free to get in touch with me. I'd be very happy to pick up a conversation about anything. But for now, I will head over to PowerPoint and um, go into the actual presentation. Thank you. Since this is an online presentation, I'm going to keep it fairly brief. I want to begin by telling you a bit about the background to the programme, and then I'll talk a bit more about the structure and aims before focusing on our approach to partnership and some of the lessons we've learned along the way. The Courtauld National Partners Programme has been running since 2018, and it was initiated as part of our Courtauld Connects project, which is a large refurbishment project, but also uh, it encompasses a new approach to working with audiences and sharing our collections in the future. And the plan is for that to be finished next year, although our partners programme will roll on a little bit longer. To explain the significance and the ideas behind the programme, I need to first give a very brief history of the court old name. The National Partners Programme is inspired by the origins of the Courtauld collection, Samuel Courtauld, one of our original benefactors, and his position as chairman of the Courtauld's textile company. And you can see a picture of him here on the left of the slide. For those of you who don't know the Courtauld business, it was a huge company with locations across the UK and internationally. And although it had its fingers in many pies over the years, it primarily made its name by creating rayon and other synthetic fabrics that revolutionised the textile industry. The other images on this slide hopefully give a sense of the scale of production in this heavily industrialised rayon industry. Samuel Courtauld became a chairman of the company in the 1920s and presided over a period of huge growth, and he became a wealthy man in the process. He was a keen supporter of the arts and spent a large part of his fortune on Impressionist and Post-Impressionist works, and he later supported the founding of the Courtauld Institute and Gallery in 1932, donating the majority of his collection between the founding and his death in 1947. So hopefully you're still with me through that brief digression. And um, the reason it's important is that our program wanted to honor both the contribution of Samuel Courtauld and more importantly, the workers of the Courtauld company across the UK. So we partnered with seven museums, galleries and heritage sites in towns and cities that had a link to the company. So these are our principal heritage sector partners. Um, I'll just run through them in no particular order. We have the Harris Museum Art Gallery and Library in Preston, the Herbert Art Gallery and Museum in Coventry, Braintree Museum, which is obviously in Braintree, Essex, Greenfield Valley Heritage Park in North Wales, Wolverhampton Art Gallery, Ulster Museum in Belfast, and more broadly, we're also working with other parts of the National Museums of Northern Ireland, and the Ferrens Art Gallery in Hull. In each area, we also have multiple partnerships alongside that with the primary organisations I've just listed. So, for example, we're working with schools, universities, arts organisations, and that allows us to deliver events related to our projects and reach as wide an audience as possible. 
You may be able to spot a few other locations on the map I haven't mentioned yet. These reflect other areas with Courtauld heritage that are engaged with other aspects of our broader Courtauld Connects project. For example, we'll work with Ashton Sixth Form College on a project later this year, and our digitisation team will visit places like Norwich as part of their volunteer project. And at the end of this presentation, I'll give you a link to our website so you can find out more about those other aspects of our work if you're interested. But for now, I'm mainly going to focus on our seven primary partners for the rest of the presentation. Our programme has three strands, uh, which you can see on the slide here. Each of them are developed to engage new groups and to maximise the impact of the programme. You'll see we have some very ambitious targets for each strand and we hope to engage with people across the UK in a variety of ways. Should mention that these numbers are the targets that were set out in our original activity plan. We do hope to be able to build on them and to um, include more people, especially volunteers and students, wherever possible. But as I mentioned earlier, things are currently changing and are under review. You'll also probably hear me refer to our key aims throughout the presentation of engaging new audiences and volunteers. Um, and this is very, very important to what we're trying to achieve. But anyway, to quickly run through these strands in a little bit more detail. The first is exhibitions and loans from our collection. These loans could be individual works or groups of works around a specific theme. And we're aided in this part of the project to some extent by the fact our gallery is currently closed for refurbishment. So we're able to offer some works for loan that we usually wouldn't be able to. All loans and exhibitions are chosen in collaboration with our partners, and I'll come back to that uh, working relationship a little bit more in the next section of my presentation. But with each loan, we've aimed to use the works from the Quartal Collection to shed new light on and enhance the fantastic collections of our partners, especially in areas that are often overlooked, such as works on paper. So here are a few of our most recent exhibitions. Um, you might see the Artful Line and the Quartal's exhibition are due to be open at the moment, um, and we're hoping that they will reopen, but we're also in the process of putting them online, um, and you can have a look at them in the coming weeks. And this slide um, shows some of our visitors enjoying some of the brilliant exhibitions that we've worked on so far. It's also worth highlighting that an exhibition is just the starting point for our projects. We and our partners are committed to providing public events and learning activities inspired by each exhibition and designed for both new and existing audiences. So they might be learning programmes with local schools that aren't, don't fall within our formal schools programme. They might be for um, older groups of people um, from local community centres, or they might be for inspiring young people to start careers in arts. There's all kinds of things going on related to our projects. Each area also has funding for a volunteer project focused on understanding the local heritage. These projects aim to give volunteers new skills and develop our understanding of the heritage of each area. Often the projects work with former Courtauld factory employees and use their memories to create films, exhibitions, new archives and other resources. The aim is for volunteers to then be able to use these skills to contribute to future work at our partner organisation or within their own communities. You can see in some of these images that in most cases, the work of our volunteers and former Courtauld employees has been showcased as part of our exhibitions. For example, in the reminiscence film in the top right of the slide, featured in radical drawing and oral history recordings made and edited by volunteers, a part of the Courtauld exhibition at Braintree. And you can see the audio unit being used in the bottom left of the screen. This adds brilliant depth to the exhibitions. It really grounds them and makes a connection with the local history of the area, but it also brings in new audiences through the crossover. People with an interest in art find out about the history and vice versa. Those who come to see the court or company displays have the opportunity to see an art exhibition they might not have deliberately set out to visit otherwise. And finally, for our workshops with schools and colleges, we specifically targeted 14 year eight to eight, excuse me, 14 to 18 year olds, as we found that although younger students often engaged with local sites, this became more difficult as they progressed through secondary school. The topics and format of the workshops are very flexible, but at their core, they aim to encourage students to respond to their heritage and their surroundings. 
So for example, in Coventry, based on the radical drawing exhibition at the Herbert, students attended a workshop with artist Alexandra Bloom to look at and to draw their city from different perspectives, including the top of a high-rise building. In Braintree, inspired by the Gauguin prints, which we've loaned there, students chose a local building that was significant to them and created a print inspired by that. Other workshops have incorporated research skills and have used archive material and historical artefacts from the Quartal Company as inspiration. So all aspects of the pro programme across the three strands are very flexible and collaborative, and that's to make sure that our work isn't an intervention just dropped into the local setting, but so that it enhances the relationships our partners already have with communities and supports them to develop new relationships that are appropriate for their area. Since our approach to working with partners is new to us and an essential part of the programme's success, I'd like to spend the rest of the talk focusing on that before summing up with a few of the lessons that we've learned along the way. Our programme tries to work with partners in a collaborative and flexible way, as I've mentioned. We don't have a one-size-fits-all approach, so every element of the programme is designed with the partners, and we try to be led by their ideas by what will work, about what will work in their local context and what fits with their structures and ways of working. We wanted to build genuine partnerships that allowed our collaborators to build on their existing strengths, both within their collections and the knowledge of their staff, and also in their relationships with their communities. So all of our loans are decided in collaboration with the partner. Obviously, there are some constraints in what we can lend because of existing schedules, conservation, etc. But we always listen to what our partners would like to do and work with them to select the most appropriate objects to fill, fulfill that aim. Part of the process involves inviting all staff involved from our partner organisation to come to the Courtauld for a research day. This is a great opportunity to share our collection with others, but also for our marketing, learning and front of house teams to meet, as well as our curators, of course. We also offer our history training for staff and volunteers at our partner site. So we go to them to deliver this, and this is to help everyone feel involved in the programme and also to help that those staff and volunteers feel confident with their visitors. And you can see on this slide a few examples of these activities in action. As for the works that we loan, in some cases the loan represents a gap in the partner's collection and a work is selected to reach new audiences who may have an interest in seeing a famous name or a type of art not usually available for them to look at. So for example, the loans of our Impressionist and Bloomsbury works tends to come from this perspective. In other cases, the loan is to draw out parts of the partner's collection that are not usually exhibited or to shed new light on an area of their collection. So for example, at the Herbert and the Harris, we've helped to curate drawing exhibitions that bring works rarely seen out of storage and show audiences a hidden depth to their local collections. In the most radical examples, we've been led by a vote in the local community to select a work to loan, and this creates a sense of local pride and ownership in the exhibition. All these different approaches have led to some very interesting and unusual exhibitions, and the key thing is that they're all unique to the local area. And here's just uh, one example from the Harris of the ways they marketed their exhibition to maximise public engagement and a sense of local ownership after um, they had local communities vote for the loan. So throughout the programme, uh, we're led by the needs of partners, and this also applies to our volunteering and young people projects. We tailor the content and outcomes of every project to help our partners reach new audiences, to make sure that we create useful outputs, and to work on a scale and schedule that suits them. But that's not to say we don't work with the partners to try new things and to reach beyond their and our current practices. We're all signed up, the court all included once we reopen, to try to reach new audiences and to engage existing audiences in new ways. With several approaches that span the whole of the programme, but as with the other aspects I've been talking about, there is a lot of focus on what works well in the local context and in tailoring what we're doing. A key aspect though for all the partners has been a generous budget for the marketing and interpretation of exhibitions, which encourages um, and people to try something new. So for example, investing in social media boosts for the first time or creating a bold new look for marketing materials. We're also 
uh, lucky to be able to offer support to all our partners who want to try new public engagement events, whether that's through um, providing advice or through providing speakers and resources and actually contributing to the events in person. We also have a very strong focus in the programme on learning from each other and so we host regular networking days for our partners to share experiences with each other and to feedback to our team at the Courtauld. And here you can see some of our fantastic partners um, at the end of one of our very busy networking days. We also invite our partners to present at the Courtauld's ResFest event, which attracts hundreds of visitors with an interest in art history, as well as giving them the opportunity to meet staff and students from across the Courtauld. And we facilitate partners working together and learning from each other as much as possible. So, for example, with visits to each other's exhibitions or opportunities to ask each other for advice through our mailing lists. So as well as reaching the people in the towns and cities we work with and fostering a sense of pride in their local heritage through the exhibitions, the volunteer programmes, the work with schools, we hope that the Courtauld National programme will increase the resilience of the teams that we're working with at our partner organisations through trying new approaches, developing new skills and new networks and building a body of trained volunteers that they can engage with over a longer term. So what are we learning then? Um, the programme and our partnerships are very much ongoing. So this is really just some prelim preliminary thoughts. Uh, that I'm sure will be more fully fleshed out as we finish off our planned projects and spend some time reflecting on the programme in future. Communication is perhaps simultaneously one of the most simple and most difficult aspects of the programme, but to truly collaborate, people do have to be talking to each other. And the more people are communicating, the more great ideas develop. For example, it's been so beneficial for us to have the curators from our different partners and the Courtauld meet when thinking about exhibition, to share their expertise and the in-depth knowledge of their own collections. I would also say it's especially important to stay in touch when things are difficult, um, which obviously is a big issue at the moment, and to be honest and open with each other. So for example, if there are delays or changes to the programme, because a lack of clarity can create unnecessary stress and can sour a relationship. So just stay in touch as much as possible. And that leads me to my next point about trust. Trusting each other is very important in partnerships. You have to feel like you're in this together and also that there is a freedom to express opinions or needs. Distributing the budget has been a key element of this for us because it empowers partners to try new approaches and to have some ownership of decisions on a local level. Our concern was that a centrally managed programme always carries a risk that partners will feel dictated to or like a lot of um, instructions are coming from a central base. So we like to try and trust our partners to guide us in the decision making in the programme. Personal relationships are also incredibly important to working collaboratively and to build the ability to communicate effectively and to trust each other you need time. You need time for networking, time for informal conversations and time to truly understand each other. We also think it's important that existing teams have the time to get to know each other and to focus on a project. We all know that feeling of having a million things to do and not feeling like you're giving any of them or any one in particular your full attention. So the feedback we've had has been that these individual projects and the associated networking, training and research days are really valuable in bringing teams together. As mentioned earlier, we also find it very important to learn from each other and we very much encourage each other to borrow and learn from ideas and projects. And through our networking events and mailing lists, we try to keep sharing experiences that the whole network can learn from. So putting time aside for day trips and events like these networking events we know can be very difficult in a busy sector where people have a million projects going on at the same time. But to try and build them in to the structure of projects from the start really helps and people we've found appreciate the excuse to spend time with their team and with other colleagues and enjoy taking the time to learn something new or to learn about something in more depth. One of the most popular aspects of our programme has been the training and skills development component. A key part of the volunteer programme is to offer new skills and obviously this is very common across most volunteer projects. 
but we wanted to make sure that we also offered appropriate opportunities for the staff at our partner organisations. We're aware that specialist art history training can be difficult to access and that many organisations have limited budget and time for professional development. So investing in partners in this way is an investment in their organisational resilience, but we also think it's an investment in the sector more broadly and that that's an important part of the legacy of projects like this one. And finally, um, the need to embrace change, which is probably the most pertinent point in the current climate. Even though we always set out to be flexible and creative in our approach to the programme, it's almost impossible to foresee just how much things might change as you proceed especially with a programme lasting five years. As a cohort of different partners, we've been through staff restructures, changes in funding and management, many, many changes to the availability of dates and specific spaces. And now, obviously, we have the pandemic to deal with. My advice and the advice that comes through from our partners is to try to roll with that and carry on talking to each other. More importantly, actively listening to and understanding each other as these changes are happening. And overall, try to embrace the changes as new opportunities. Who knows what great outcome you'll end up with because of a delay in starting a project that means somebody new gets involved or you have some extra resources. Or what new relationships you'll form by approaching your project in a different way. Or for example, at the moment, by taking your work online. So what's next? Um, as I mentioned earlier, we're now in uncertain times, but we very much hope that the place-based aspects of the programme will be up and running again in the near future. And we'll also be adapting to make sure we still offer the best possible experience for all our partners and all the participants in our school and volunteer projects. As far as the overall structure of the programme is concerned, we hope to reopen the three exhibitions that are currently closed and then look forward to delivering a further two exhibitions later this year and another next year. Alongside these will be a programme for young people in local schools and colleges and we're also planning new volunteer projects for four different areas across the UK. Taking the time to celebrate and come together at the end of the programme is very important to us, so we're hoping to be able to celebrate the work of everyone involved with a display and an event when the Quartal Gallery reopens in 2021. Once all of that work is done, however, the critical part of the programme will be to reflect and share the lessons we've learned. So, as well as doing talks and events like this, we'll bring together our partners, volunteers, teachers and students to help us develop resources and toolkits. In keeping with our approach to our partnerships so far, we'll be led by our collaborators in the production of these key outputs to ensure they fully capture the experiences of all those involved in the programme and to make them useful in building a legacy of the project, both on a national and a local level. For now, though, we're very much focusing on keeping our partnerships thriving remotely. We've started a project to create an online exhibition in which a variety of staff and volunteers at our partners choose an object or a work from their collection and also a favourite from the Quartal collection. Hopefully, this might be able to form the basis of some future work or exhibition once we can reopen, but at the moment, it allows us to highlight some of the fantastic collections across the UK and provides an opportunity for our partners to continue to collaborate together. We're also actively using our mailing list that allows partners to contact each other with questions or comments. We're offering our courses, our short courses at the Courtauld, which have now moved into an online format to our partners for free. And we hope that will allow them to continue some training and development during these difficult times. And ultimately, we're doing everything we can to support and help promote the wonderful work our partners are doing to share their collections and work with the public through virtual tours and social media campaigns. In the longer term, we're planning for a future that might involve lower numbers of people in physical spaces, but more engagement online. So we're scoping out new approaches and continuing to be creative and innovative in our approach to reaching as wide an audience as possible and making sure we still fulfill some of the aims of the programme. So hopefully um, I've given a brief introduction to our programme and some of the ways we try to go about working in collaboration. If you'd like to find out more, please do go to our website and follow us on social media. Uh, we're on the usual channels, Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. We have brought together all the virtual tours and collections of our partners on our website. So please do take a look and find out more about the great work they're doing at the moment. 
or you can get in touch with me via email if you have any questions or if you'd like to discuss any aspects of the program further and all of the relevant addresses are currently on the screen. So that's it from me. Thanks for taking the time to listen. Take care everyone and I look forward to seeing you at a future Museums and Heritage show.